afternoon, dear Madam Vice President. Um, just for your information, uh, Group 1 is the employers group, and therefore my group represents uh, employers across the whole of the EU. In a recent interview you had with the Financial Times, um, you, you said, and I quote, I am sure that nobody will be interested in the Spitzen candidate system. Dear Madam Vice President, I could not agree with you more. The purpose of the Conference on the Future of Europe is designed to bring Brussels policymaking closer to the citizen. It is therefore important to identify what is of little interest, as you have done in the interview on the Financial Times. But equally more important, it is, is that we identify what is important for our citizens. And here one can easily list a better healthcare system, more and better jobs, sustainability of our planet, strong economy, an environment where business and enterprise can thrive, the eradication of poverty, more security, and the protection of fundamental values, rights, and freedoms. Certainly not an easy list. But I think we can all agree that this is what our citizens want. Therefore, the question is how we can ensure that the EU remains the most suitable vehicle to satisfy these requirements. Now, this is not to say that the EU um, has not played played an important role in delivering these requirements over the past 60 years, far from it. But there is no doubt that we can and must do more. Our citizens demand it of us. We can and must do more not only in delivering the right policies, but we can and must do more also in communicating them. The Union, which was conceived by our founding fathers as a project of peace, clearly needs to be adapted to the new realities we are living in, and, and in some aspects also redesigned, so that it remains the most suitable project that can give us peace, prosperity and democracy. It is indeed extremely important that we start off on the right note and that the right messages are delivered. So allow me to suggest what in our view are three possible must-dos. First and foremost, the conference should aim at creating a structured and virtuous participation mechanism around the recovery, reform, and resilience plans, in view of strengthening the mechanisms of inclusion and participation for the future of Europe. Secondly, it is clear that civil society is the key focus of the conference in terms of audience. This conference cannot be about the, low, the loudest voice, which can often be manipulative. Democracy is about representativeness. This is why, in our view, the ESC must be at the core of the conference. ESC should be given the platform and the authority and the right to contribute to make use of its network, as we have done, for instance, in the run-up to Brexit. Our fathers founded the ESC precisely because civil society is at the core of democracy. So we need more, not less, of its input. Thirdly, the outcome. We cannot repeat the mistakes of the past, generating frustrations, my colleague Shimus mentioned this, on the lack of delivered concrete results. Allow me to say that a report to the European Council at the end will clearly be insufficient. We need to already have clear in our heads what will happen after the final report so that we can speak about it and reassure the people we are going to talk with. Madam Commissioner, and I will conclude, I believe that there is still work to be done on the conference on the future of Europe. I think it is our priority to ensure that this does not turn into a boomerang where a lot of hype is created and very little value is produced. I must admit that the initial skirmishes between the institutions did not fill me with confidence. My process, my personal wish is to see a process undertaken that will really reach out to the citizen in the street, the farmer in Poland, the shop owner in Italy, the young looking for their first job, the innovator in Sweden and the pensioner wishing and looking for better healthcare. My wish is that we truly are able to grasp what they want from the EU and that we can translate this into a European Union that counts. And I believe that it is here that we can play a role, to, a pivotal role together. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President.